Welcome to today's episode of Rainer on Leadership, your online resource and home for leadership and advice for the local church. I'm Tom Rainer. I'm joined by Sam Rainer. We've got a, gosh, should I say it's interesting, Sam? Interesting is a vague and oblique word which allows the listener or the reader to insert their own meaning. Yeah, so I'm not going to say it's interesting. I'm going to say it will be a very helpful ah. podcast for many for many people. And what I love about this, what I love about this is this podcast content, at least the thesis behind it, did not originate with Sam, did not originate with Tom, but originated with a faithful listener. And I'm choosing not to give his name just simply because he may be in the situation and I don't want to uh, betray any confidences that are there, but I know you're listening and I want to thank you for this. I'm actually using the title that you suggested, listener, counting the cost of staying in a church. So thank you for that. We love when we get listener feedback and we will Talk about that in just a moment. In the meantime, thank you, Southeastern Seminary. Southeastern is committed to helping you get the training you need and pursue your ministry from anywhere in the world. So when you apply to Southeastern, there's a little space in there where you can put a code and you put in the words church answers, no space, church answers, plural, no space, and they will waive the fee. So make sure you do that and make sure you apply. They have a lot of great programs, a lot of great degrees. We're particularly fond of the one uh, that is the MA in church revitalization. That's a degree you can probably get done in a year online, but they've got tons of degrees. That's what my student pastor is going for. Well, that is, that is uh, what one of our platinum clients is going for as, as well, Sam. So we're sending a lot of people that way. So explore degrees, schedule a visit, apply at sebts.edu. They're not just a seminary that's about theological education. They are about ministry preparation. Sam, I just got through with a coaching call. The coaching client, uh, Steve, you know who I'm talking about. We don't have to give a whole lot more words. <laughs> one of my favorite, one, there, are, one of my favorite. there are a few of our coaching clients where they're on a first name basis. And when you say Steve, yes. it's like, I know exactly yeah, who we, you're talking about. By the way, and we have, I, I don't, I, and we have, I, just more. in case he's listening, I, I, I want everyone to know he's like my favorite. I mean, goofy and uh, smart. smart and uh, personable. And probably the most fun pastor on the planet. Highly relatable. Yeah, he's just a, he's just a whole lot of fun, and he dresses and we have, in in an interesting way. Yeah, good word, good choice of <laughs> word. Steve, we love you, man. We absolutely love you. Steve, Steve was talking about how great some of the content that you have written, Sam, is, and he was he was talking about an article that recently released, and he was just he had a lot of great things to say about you. He didn't have anything great to say about me, but so I'm not going to get into a pity party. I just simply want to affirm the great things he said about you. But I've got to echo it because this new Church Answers Gold is absolutely incredible. I thought it was going to be good. But we've gone from good to great, to use the words of Steve. Fantastic. <laughs> we've gone to fan- we we have gone to fantastic, and I absolutely love what is happening. We've 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 already done a, a case study as of this recording, uh, with but but it's 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 all about here's a church, here's a situation, here's the solution. It's multi, it's, it's really three videos. So, so when you say gold, we're talking about our subscription. So we have. Uh, no, that's yeah, good. We have, we have that's three good. levels of subscription, silver, gold, and platinum. Um, we offer community at the, the silver level where we have Church Answer Central. Gold is really, we call them collabs, uh, but you can th- kind of think of it as like a, a case study consultation uh, that comes yes. your way uh, about five times a year. Uh, just We give checklists with that. So not only do you get everything at the silver level with gold, um, you also get this collab that we do. Uh, and then the platinum level, and it includes includes an annual know your community report. Yes, as well. yes. Um, which that's that, there's the subscription right there. If you just want the know your community report, that pays for it. Yeah, right it there. pays yes, for itself. Exactly. Um, which the know your community report is our demographic report. And the platinum level gets all of that, silver and gold level plus personal coaching. Um, so if people are curious about like, you guys do this join thing at church answers what am i joining that's what you're joining we 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 have uh, three different tiers that offer different levels of value um and the gold really is the one that i think is well it's gold it's gold gold. yes Um, 
and 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 plat- platinum is uh we 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 have a max of 30 we don't advertise it uh, i'll say we rarely advertise it uh i will say now i, I know when i said on a previous podcast we're at 29 right mm. now so there there is a there is an opening i haven't gone out and advertised well, it but, well uh, yeah we don't, you know, we don't really knows. need to advertise this stuff and we, we, you and i just kind of have a cap on what we can do in no. terms of personal coaching uh, I'm sure somebody will take us up on this now that you've mentioned it on a podcast. <laughs> yes, let us know. We'll be happy to. All right. What did our listener recommend to us? The topic of today's podcast is counting the cost of staying at a church. Sam and I consistently advocate long pastoral tenure. Every church is going to have critics and problems. Every church is going to have down moments. And it's not always the sign that you should wave the white flag and leave. But we also have to look at the other possibility. And the other possibility is it is time for you to leave. And there are different situations where you can say, when is it time for us to leave? When, uh, what, what, what are we, what are the different keys that may open the door out of the current church? And we're going to look at that and we're going to look at it in terms of counting the cost. I'm grateful to you listener who recommended that we tackle this topic. And if any of you other listeners want to let us know, uh, one of the places that you can write us is, uh, I guess, info at churchanswers.com. Yeah, that'll, that'll, get, that'll get us there. So uh, I know we've mentioned several things about Church Answers. Yeah, if, you, if you're curious about any of them, info at Church Answers. Or you can just go to churchanswers.com if you're interested in the subscriptions. You can click the Join Now button. That's the easiest way. We'll, we'll provide yep. a link in the show notes as well. Yep, all, all of those. So, Sam, let's talk about counting the cost. Uh, I have walked with you through some churches. You're now moving into long tenure phase. <laughs> do, seven, do as I say, seven, not as I do on this podcast. No, this is do, do as you say. Uh, seventh year. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in, in my seventh year at West Bradenton. Um, now, I, in defense of myself, just a little bit with my. I haven't said anything where you have to defend <laughs> wonder, yourself. I'm I don't know why you're. I don't know. Why are you getting defensive when there's been no attacks? Good point, uh, Marvin. I am being defensive. <laughs> I yes, early in my tenure, I, I I moved around a little bit. I won't say that it was egregious, but I hopped around a little bit, and that's what you do in your twenties and thirties. I did, but anyway, um, I have settled down. I've been here going on seven years at West Bradenton. Yes, I, not a long tenure, yeah. but longer than average. We'll say that. Way longer than average when you look at about two and a half years being the typical tenure. Yeah, the med- the median tenure. You're 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 much on the other side. But we we want to talk specifically about those cases where it is time to leave. And we're saying count the cost. Count the cost. When is it time to leave? And again, the caveat is we're not advocating pastors leave their churches, but this is one of those situations where we're asking the question: Is it time to leave? So let's go. Let's go to the the first one, and I'm going to really chime in on this one, Sam, and then you can add anything you want to. And then there's a lot of others. Count the cost of the financial burden is great. I have given my story of being a pastor in St. Petersburg, Florida, where the pay was in in terms of my hours, it was minimal. It was below minimum wage in terms of my in terms of the hours. I ended up leaving that church because the financial burden was too great. We were actually having to check out food from the food church pantry that tells you where, and by where check we out, were you there. No, 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 no. There was a place to write what food you had taken and for what. And so I would actually put it I have, on the on – the, I have memories of peanut butter. It, for whatever reason, the – I, I probably was. I remember being able to get into the pantry and pick out peanut butter, and that was so thrilling to me. I didn't really know what was going on. I was but, just a kid. Well, we couldn't afford most groceries. We we couldn't afford any level of groceries. We couldn't afford a lot of things. But but here here was the situation. I was wrong. It yes, my salary was was way too low, way too low. Uh, in in my tenure there at this particular point, the church budget had tripled. But my incoming salary had not increased at all in those two and a half years, three years. And so uh, I went to another church. And one of the primary reasons to go to the other church was financial. But you know the rest of the story, Sam. What did I not do? You didn't, you didn't ask. You, know, you didn't talk to anybody. I did. You just left. I didn't. Mm-hmm. 
And a number of people were very upset with me because they said, if you had just asked, we would, we, most, most church members do not intentionally give a pastor low pay. Now there are a few out there and there were a few at this church that did, but most do not. Most assume that somebody is taking care of it. If in fact, there was one key leader in the church. She said, if you had said something, I would have taken care of it within a week. Mm. But instead, I left. But there are times when the financial burden is great. Yeah, you know, there. You, I, I think of the. I'm just trying to think of an example. Um, you know, a, a pastor with a growing family, um, and it just gets to that point to where th- the next step is, you know, a full time position. The next step is um, a, a church that can pay a little better. Um, I understand the calling and the calling to a place and the importance of that calling and money shouldn't be the only issue uh, that causes you to leave. Uh, but it is a factor that plays in. Sure. And if you can't provide for your family, that's, you know, if you're stealing peanut butter out of the church. Peanut I wasn't <laughs> stealing peanut butter. I was checking now, out now peanut being butter. Defensive. Um, well, oh, let me see why <laughs> if you're stealing peanut butter. Why should I be defensive? Oh, man. Uh, it is a factor. And it is, it's something, when you're counting the cost, it's something to consider. Um, if the financial burden is great and there's an opportunity someplace else, um, I can understand why you would consider it. Um, again, it shouldn't be the only reason. And if you, if money is the only reason you do anything in ministry, well, the Bible has a whole lot to say about that. And it's not very positive. Se- second one is that the emotional toll is too great. We're hearing a lot about that. Uh, as we're in the still still in the pandemic, uh, mainly post quarantine era, right now, there's burnout, there's weariness with the critic, critics, there's there's decision making that I've never had to make before. Uh, I, I don't know. You tell me, Sam. Is the emotional toll as high as you've ever seen it in your forty plus years? Uh, yes, um, it, it it reminds me of nine eleven, um, and shortly after nine eleven, but nine eleven was more acute. Um, this has been prolonged. Uh, this is more, uh, it's not acute, it's chronic. Um, and uh, so in that way, I think it's a little worse than post 9-11 um, because de- decision fatigue is real. The emotional um, mm-hmm. toll on families is real. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've seen pastors kind of respond in one of two ways, and I hate to, you know, generalize too much here. Um, pastors and church leaders, either it's, you know, those who are kind of at their wits end or those who are just like, well, you know, it's, it's almost like not resignation, but <laughs> it's like, it's, it's all happened. So we might as well just keep on pushing on. And, um, and, and, mm. and, and, and depending on your situation, I mean, you could really have quite a, quite a burden on you right now. Um, uh, there's a coaching client that we have that I thought he had a great insight and he basically said, and this is not a, a statement on what should be just facts. Um, he said, you know, the churches that are under lockdown and stayed under lockdown longer have more angst in them than those that did not. And I think he's exactly right. Um, now, you, you no. may say that those churches did, those churches that stayed on lockdown did, did the better thing. Um, I'm not trying to make a statement on what's right or wrong here, only that the observation that the longer you put restrictions on the church, the more angst there is in the congregation. I think that's true. And so if that's you, and if you're in a community that you just kind of had to do it, even if you didn't want to do it, right? Um, you're going to have a lot of angst in your congregation, and there's probably a greater emotional toll associated with leading a, a congregation that uh, kept their doors closed longer or had more restrictions on them. The third point is ancillary, maybe an extension of the emotional toll. Uh the cost of relationships are strained. There have been a lot of strained relationships as a result of the pandemic in churches, but church life in general lends itself to strained relationships because people have different opinions on how we, and I'm not going to do my air quotes, but how we do church, how we should do things, what choices that we should make. I heard from one church answers uh, client, say I'm one at the silver level that uh, said, you know, I walk into a worship service and I look out at the people there and probably two out of three, I feel relationship strain as a result. He said, I don't, I don't know if I can just keep that up with that strain because I'm supposed to be the shepherd for the sheep. 
is strange. It's a good point. And if you're a change agent and you let a church through a lot of change, um, sometimes on the other side of that change, there is too much strain. And you were there for a season to get the church to where it needs to be. Um, again, I want to champion tenure, long tenure. And if you can stick it out, that's always better. But there, absolutely. But, but when it comes to counting the cost of staying, th there is something to be said of, I don't, you know, I, I feel like I did the right thing. I feel like I led the church through the down the right path and through the right change. But the cost of that change was so great that there really needs to be somebody else that comes in and takes the church where it is now. And and I can think of cases of that being true. Now, I think more people think that, that that's the situation they're in than, than are actually in that situation. So I want to be careful here. You can't use your uh, haphazard change efforts as a way of justifying leaving. Um, but there are cases and there are times when you, as you're counting the cost, you can just got to say, listen, I did the right thing. I let the right change. The cost was greater than I thought, particularly relationally. And somebody else needs to shepherd these people now. Um, that there, there are cases of that. And I think it's something to consider if you're, if you're, if you are at this point counting the cost. Count the cost of church unity is at stake. That's almost autobiographical for you, Sam. I know that in one particular church, you felt like your staying was going to risk the unity of the church. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a power group. They wanted me out. Um, they had inroads with some staff and the personnel committee, and they threatened me that if I didn't resign that Sunday, that they were going to say bad things about me, and they wouldn't even tell me what they were going to say. So um, I, I had to count the cost. I had to say, okay, I can fight this. I can win. And you would have won. I, yeah. I in, so. terms of vote, in terms of in, votes, In terms of votes. Won. But I, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to have to stand in front of everybody on Sunday morning and explain this whole situation now because this group is going to go down the road of trying to get me fired. Um, and it just wasn't worth the unity of the church. So I told this group and the personnel committee, I said, all right, I'm going to give you guys what you want. I'm going to resign on Sunday. And I resigned. I didn't say a word. Um, and even to this day, I, you know, even on this podcast, I don't really say a whole lot because I don't want to risk the unity of the church. Although I think we're far enough removed now to where we start talking about it some, but it was a terrible season of my life. And uh, it's probably the low point of my ministry. And it was hard. Sure. I spent six months unemployed uh, while I was trying to find an another job. And that's when West Brainton hired me. So I feel very blessed to be at a church. Um, it's not a perfect church, but a good church. Um, and I do know that this group was smaller rather than larger, but it was going to be a bloodbath and it would involve firing staff too. And it was just like, you know what, I, am, am I going to stick it out 10 years to see this church through it? And I, I questioned whether I would or not. And I thought... That was the key question. Am I willing to go through the other side? And you, you, you ended up saying, I don't know if I'll be here that yeah. long. And so, yeah, I was, you know, I was in my early mid thirties and the church had grown tremendously. Um, and, and I just thought, you know what, it's better for me just to exit graciously, not say a word and let somebody else have this thing. Um, and it was hard. It was very I, hard. I gave you a church where you were an incredible fit. I'm not suggesting that you were a bad fit at the previous church, but you certainly are a better fit where you oh, are Oh, completely. I'm, I'm a better fit culturally. Um, I'm a better fit for the church itself, um, organizationally. Um, there's There was a lot of good in it, but I didn't see it at the time. If you'd have talked to me three months into unemployment, you know, hey, how are things going? You glad? Are you glad you got fired? Um, no, I would say it's terrible. But it ended up being a good thing. And, you know, seven, eight years removed, now I can look back and say God was in that, uh, even in the sin of people, uh, you know, doing some pretty bad, bad things that I won't get into. I, I stood up for some pretty serious issues. That was my, that was the thing that I, there were some things there that I was standing for that caused this group to want me out. I'll just say that. Yes. Yes. And I remember it well, and you made the right decision to take those stands. But again, it was at a cost. And that's that's what this whole topic is about. Well, you know, what what is the cost? You know, what is what is the cost of doing so? Count the cost on your family. First Timothy three five. 
For if man cannot manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? You know, what, what, what does that mean? Well, when you look at how Paul is addressing this letter to Timothy, he's basically saying the church and your family are not competing entities. At least they should not be. The church includes your family and your family is your first line of ministry. And so when Paul tells Timothy to take care of your family, he's saying, as you minister to the church, your family is your first line of ministry. I know of uh, someone that I primarily was coaching, Sam. You may have had some involvement with it. And his family was getting, it, it, was, it was awful. I was just, it was terrible what his family was going through. So much so that uh, his children and eventually his wife decided not to go to that church. But he stuck it out because he thought it was the right thing to do, to, st to stay with the church. It was a situation where he now will say he was wrong. He, he, he should have left for the sake of his family. His family was under vicious attack and there was nothing he could do, humanly speaking, to stop it. You got to count the cost on your family. Yeah. I think that we also, as it's hard to pull back and have clarity of mind when we're going through the fire that is in, in, the, in the case of the situation that you're describing, particularly when it involves our family. And that's why having mentors and people and our peers and trusted confidants is important um, because they can see things that are obvious that you just can't see. And this particular individual that you're talking about, the motive was pure. The heart was noble. The desire was good. I am going to do the right thing. But right. the obvious thing, which was the right thing, was hard to see, even through good motives, purity of heart and nobility. And, and that's where you really need to take a step back, particularly when your family is under attack and say, is, is the right thing actually stepping away? Because I want to do the noble thing, but maybe it's not the right thing. And those are very hard cases and very hard situations with, you know, that don't have a whole lot of easy answers. And it takes a whole lot of prayer and a whole lot of trusting in uh, God and looking to some key people in your life to help you through it. That's why we exist at Church Answers, actually. I mean, that's part of what we do uh, through our coaching, through our Platinum Group, is to help people through stuff like that. And even even at the silver level, where they have the community, they're helping each other, and we're we're joining in quite often. I do want to thank our listener for giving us this topic. It's a much needed topic. It's a really a timely topic, and I want to make certain that we once again express our appreciation to him. You know who you are. You say you're a faithful listener. You hardly miss any of these. But before we go, Sam, I want to just say thank you to Tyndale. The partnership is going so well. And we feature different things of Tyndale every week. And I know that uh, you want to talk about the Filament Bible collection. So it's, uh, it's, it's just a part of the partnership <laughs> yeah. that we have with Tyndale. So here's what I love about Filament. Um, when you hear about it at first, you're like, okay, okay. It's... It's a it's a it's a combination digital slash um, print Bible, and when I first heard about it, I thought, "How does this thing work?" And and then I show people, I show people how it works. I show people in my church, and their eyes light up, and they just go, "This is the most amazing thing I have ever seen." So let me just explain how it works. You, you, you get a print Bible, a filament Bible by Tyndale in, in a great translation, the New Living Translation, and you scan your phone on top of the page number and it pulls up commentaries and videos and all of the stuff around the content on that page number. So you can be reading your Bible and then want to dive a little deeper and all that it is is smartphone, scan it, pulls everything up through the through the filament app. It is absolutely wonderful. I know that has nothing that I was supposed to read copy. I'm sorry, Tyndale. Um, That's better than <laughs> I'm copy. sorry. <laughs> you provided us a wonderful copy. But as a pastor, I just wanted to share that. If you have not checked out the filament Bible collection, you are missing out. And again, it's a it's a print Bible that comes with an app. You scan the page number. It pulls up all sorts of stuff. Every time I show this to people in my church, they just absolutely light up. And it's phenomenal. It is absolutely phenomenal. I have, only have one critique, Dad. Only one critique. Make okay. a filament pew Bible. We would buy so many of them. 
Ooh. Yes, make a filament pew Bible. Um, but that's just me, and Tyndale does a great job. Uh, so my critique is, I just want more. I want more. Give me more. Um, but it's it's a great, great tool. You got to try it out. Yeah, filament Bible collection. All right. I know you want to give us a farewell and thank all of our listeners. I do want to thank our listeners, uh, particularly the one who submitted the question. And we want to thank you for listening in today on Rainer on Leadership. Be sure to watch on YouTube. Hello, everyone, as they wa- – I'm waving – if you're listening. I could have done the air quotes for them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, th- we do have an audience on YouTube. So thank you, those of you who are watching via YouTube. For those who are on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever your favorite podcasting app is, we're glad that you have joined us today. And make sure you join us online at churchanswers.com, where we are growing healthy churches together.